Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and businesses that I think are really fun. But today I have a treat for you. It's a treat for me, y'all. Y'all have seen her on TV. She is an author, she is a speaker, and she's super fun. If you haven't seen her on her um, one of her pages, you, you gotta go out there. I'm talking about none other than Judge Lynn Toller. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining me with this. I really appreciate it. Ricky, I would do just about anything for you. You just, you're delightful and we have fun together. So, yeah, we and do. Got, and we, we got the right sense of trouble. humor. <laughs> yeah, you got the right sense of humor. Not everybody can laugh at all the stuff you do. And I, 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 I get it. it. I know. And I've seen some of the stuff you do on Instagram. I, we're going to talk about some of that too, because yeah. Yeah, you need some help. So you all now know who I'm talking to, and you can see how much how what it's gonna be like. It is what it is. Yeah, you're right. So Judge Lynn, off the jump. It's already in trouble, y'all. So just buckle your seatbelts. We're just gonna have some fun. Judge Lynn, we got so much to talk about. And mostly I kept telling you before I wanted to talk to you about my favorite book that you've written, because you've written quite a few. But the one that I like the best is called My Mother's Rules. This is my favorite book. And I'll tell you why. It's because a lot of us who have those moms who always want to give us, you know, advice. And at the time we think they're crazy anyway. And then we grow up to find out that, oh my gosh, they you knew what right. they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you figure it out. And the, the, the interesting thing about my mother and I was I never went through that particular thing. I always... And I think that's why I'm here where I am as opposed to where I could have been, which, yeah. you know, because, I, it, it, you know, it, it could have been, it started out a little shaky for me. Uh, but um, I always listened to her, even when I was a teenager, not necessarily did everything she told me to do, but the, but the heavy advice I always heard because I needed it so much. Right. We all you do. Know? Now, in the book, I, one, there's a section, one of the rules is get your mind right. I, you know what, that is so apropos for right now. You look Are at you everything kidding? that's going on. Yeah. Get your mind right. What does that mean to you? And what are folks, what are you looking at when you say get your mind right? When I say get your mind right, it's like, look, you are in a world with a whole lot of people, a whole lot of places, a whole lot of problems and things. And you have to be in a mindset where you could come out and not get triggered because to be triggered is means the world has a gun on you and they're in charge. You need to be bulletproof. You need to, you, you, you know, you need to take the weaponry from them by being emotionally strong and not let the world just toss you around like that. You get your mind right. You go in there expecting upset problems and issues and you're going to decide before you even start, how you going to respond and that you're not going to let people get under your skin. If you get your, and it's an obligation that you have to make. The world mm -hmm. is not obligated to treat you in a manner that does not upset you. It's just Oh, not. wow. You know, that, you know, that's so sad because what you just said is the world does not revolve around me. Not at all. And, and we seem to believe it does every time we get our feelings hurt or there's something upset or a right of mine impinges on a right of yours, we just lose our mind. I saw the other day a woman talking about she got PST, PTSD from wearing a mask. <laughs> it's annoying. We're all wearing it. Pull exactly. yourself together. Yeah. You know, guys that go to the war and watch their friends grow up. PTSD, but yes. a mask. I know. But you know what? Again, like you said, it takes getting your mind right and getting, get and, and I like what you said. It's your responsibility to do that. We need to stop looking at everybody else to fix us. Right, right. And everybody else to, uh, the other day, I got a, um, uh, I was supposed to get a five figure check. Mm -hmm. and they sent me one for $800. Now, well, I could have got excited. I, I was a little. <laughs> there was a little tension. But I, right before I called these people, I said, you know, whoever answers the phone didn't make this mistake. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
if I get her to like me and laugh with me, she will be more likely to help me than if I call with all this angst about the missing thing. So I called her, I said, yeah, I told her what happened. She says, I think the check might be a little short. And she fell out laughing and oh she stayed gosh. on that phone with me till she got me another check issue. That's the right. really difference. I had the right to be upset because they were sure. wrong. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't going to do me. Any- I got my right, mind right before I called that woman. Yeah. It wasn't her fault. You know, it, it's interesting, too, because you look at that, you know, getting your mind right. It, depending on the position that you're in, whether you're somebody's manager, somebody's spouse, whatever, there is an opportunity for you to lose it completely. But what that will also do is take from you the power that you would have otherwise had if you don't get your mind right. Absolutely. And, you know, when you're angry, you don't think as well. You're not as articulate. People will, di- will, will dismiss what you say because you're a hysterical individual. But if you, you remain thoughtful and remember, I may not only have this interaction with this individual, but I may need to have interactions with them down the road. All right and now. therefore, I need to discuss it, talk to him in a manner that allows us both, you know, to get what we want or at least get closer to what we want without losing our minds. And I think we have completely and utterly lost the capacity to do that. I mean, I, I agree a hundred percent, but it's funny, like you said, you know, be nice to people now because you're going to need them later. You know, growing up in the corporate America, they tell, you know, be, be mindful of the people you're stepping on going up the ladder because they'll right. be the same ones you'll see on the way back down. There you go. You go it you is make a good exit wherever you are because you never know where you're going to end up. And who's watching? You never know who's looking at you. So that, that, that's an interesting segue. Let me tell you why. So you went from just being an attorney to being a judge to being on TV with one show, then moving over to another show. Who was watching? Who saw you? Who were you nice to? Who did, you, do you see what I'm saying? Getting your mind right along the way. Because I'm sure it was smooth sailing, no drama the whole time. Oh, no drama at all. No drama at all. It's easy. You know, it's so interesting. Before you said that, I thought about that exact story. But I came up to work. I came to work as a judge every day, loud Mm -hmm. and poppy, like I was going to change the world. Never did. But I went in there acting like it. And somebody from Fox saw that. I don't know who. I don't know when. I don't know where. They never gave me an answer. I got a phone call. Do you want to be on TV? Because I showed up every day and acted an outrageous like yeah we're gonna solve this what do you mean all of y'all in here have got you gonna between you one day i got so mad at brothers driving with bad licenses oh my. i added up all there were like 70 of them in there and i added up all their fines and i said mm-hmm. do you know that the people in this room about to pay the state of ohio fifty thousand dollars y'all got that kind of money you want to give the state of ohio and that's because I never just went to work. I sure. went to work. <laughs> and that, That's and good. That, that changes. You, you never know. If you show up every day loud and poppy, you never know who sees you. And mm-hmm. that, in, in, in the end of the day, might give you an opportunity you otherwise wouldn't have had. That's true. So, so you're, you're, you're spitting so much amazing advice. So I'm just going to keep going because I can hear people saying, ask her this, ask her this. Okay. So I'm on a job that I'm not a huge fan of, but I'm there. I'm doing the job, but am I really going to work? Yeah. And you got to go to work. It's not just because just because you don't if you don't like the job you're in, if you go to work and go to work, you might get promoted. You might get someplace else. Somebody might notice you. So instead of playing into the pain that you already have by by being lackadaisical about the job that you're in, because you'll never get out of it. If you if you do that, go in there with like, wow, I'm on I'm going to take this sucker down and go and go above and beyond. And right. that gives you the opportunity to leave the gig mm-hmm. as opposed to being cranky and staying. Right. But they don't pay me enough, Judge Lynn. You don't understand. That's better than nothing at all until you get a better job and keep looking for it. I always tell my kids, no matter what job you have, keep looking for another one because you never know and you never know what's going to happen and you never know what's going to do. But, you know, you took the job. So you do the work and you do the work as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. I know that's it. All right. Let's move on. 
Let's talk about relationships, shall we? First of all, let's talk to talk to me a little bit about your new show that you're doing right now. Well, right now I'm doing a show, uh, Hip Hop Boot Camp. We used to pick cotton. Now we are the cotton. We are the product in the system, in the paid prisons that they make money off of. And they count on you guys not being able to handle your emotions. So you go. Not over millions of dollars, not over the health and welfare of your wife and children, some words. Uh, and uh, we take a lot of hip hop stars and uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of black love issues. Mm. And we talk to them. We've had uh, CeeLo Green on there. We've had uh, Nori is on this season. I didn't know who he was. My kids know everything. I never knew. I got to pass right. everything by them because, you know, we had Soldier Boy, Walker Flocker, and oh, you wow. would be amazed at the, um, the learning that happens there. You uh, know, in Styles P, all of them, it, the last night we're usually all in tears, mm-hmm. hugging, talking about what a tremendous experience it was. And Dr. Ish is so good at what he does. He's my, he's the, he's really the host. I'm like the secondary host. Okay. Um, but, but that was by design because he works really, really, <laughs> really <laughs> so hard. <funny. laughs> and I just was like, oh, I can't oh do that. I just want to come in and, at the end. Right, and sit but down. They call him months after the show was over because he mm-hmm. really cares and he's really good at what he does. Wow. And, and it, it, it's, 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 it's a voyeuristic show to be sure, mm-hmm. but we have real lessons we learn from it. Yeah. So in that, is it the success of the show, the fact that it is relatable? Because we're all in a relationship, whether it's with your person, your kids, your boss, you're in some sort of a relationship. What kind of stuff that are these couples learning on the show that can be relatable anywhere? Well, we one of the best lessons that we teach him is LUV listen, understand, and validate. It's a, it's a means wow. by which you can communicate. And we do an exercise where they figure out, oh, what are the words that we have to know? Listen, understand, and validate. So in order, we always think about communication in terms of the number and the, and the volume of the words that we use and do we get what we want as a function of using them. Mm-hmm. But communication first is about active and, and, and purposeful listening. So you mm-hmm. listen, then you understand. You gotta, You can't just listen so you can fight with that person. Right. You have to listen to understand what they're saying, where they're coming from, why they're saying it, because that allows you to resolve any issues and then validate. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. to repeat to them what they said. So here's what I heard you saying, because number one, half the time, you get it wrong. Because well, you listen to all that static of, of your past life in your ears. Sure. And you hear what's really said. So a lot of arguments are avoided simply because you validate it. Like, oh, no, no, that's not what I said. This is what I said. Okay, then let's go from there. And Dr. Ish and I always talk from a perspective of we are speaking to the hip hop group, but we mm-hmm. are also speaking to the people watching. So sure. we put our lessons in terms of things, everybody. Mm-hmm and relate to and understand. Because you look at that, like you said, it is a voyeuristic show to be sure. We're watching someone else's trauma while literally sitting on our very own. Right, exactly. And and not realizing that some of that stuff just gets in. You know, I love that, L-U-V, listen, understand, Understand and and validate. validate. And we get more love on that particular episode than any other one, because people are like, huh, that's something I can use. Yeah, I, I'm just that that I was like, <laughs> but, it, but you don't think about it until somebody you tells you. Yeah, and I like you said the act of listening, which again, a lot of us don't do. We listen to respond. We don't listen to learn. Right. We listen to respond because like you said, we're listening to see where the weak link is that I can get my jab in there first. Right, Our absolutely. My mother used to say, I used to listen because I'm a very anxious, anxiety prone person. Mm-hmm. She used to tell me, Lock, knock that F off your ears because I used to have fears. I listened with my fears. So what I heard was what was going, you know, I heard a horrible, he wasn't saying something horrible, but I heard that. And mama yeah. would say, knock that F off your ears. You just I love that. Ears and not your ears. Stop. All it. right. Take the F off your ears. Yes. That's good stuff. That right there will preach all by itself. I'm leaving. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. 
But yeah, yeah, my mom was a bad sister. She was something. It sounds like <laughs> I'm sorry I did not get a chance to meet your mom, but I know we talked about we talked about her a lot. So a lot we did. We really yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, you really got her. You really you you really got her. You want to believe in the the the, 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 the the best compliment I ever got mm-hmm. was from you. Do you oh. remember? I had yeah. come back to El Paso. Uh-huh. I tell this story to everybody. Oh. I come back from El Paso. I come back to El Paso mm-hmm. and I was fretting about the speech I was going to give because mm-hmm. I didn't want to repeat myself. And you said two things. Number one, that's okay because some people need to hear it twice. Mm-hmm. And then I said, I don't even remember when I was here last. And you gave me the exact date. And May 13th, two, May 20th, 2013. And I said, how in the world did you remember that? And Mm -hmm. you said, that's the day you saved my marriage. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget that as long as I live. That was the most fabulous thing. Number one, because I like you. Number two, because I think you're funny and we have the same sense of humor. Number three, you were such a strong woman. And to hear you say the things, because I'm considered a strong woman and people Mm -hmm. didn't understand what my issues were and for another strong woman to have the very same issues mm, yeah. and and, to, and for me to have helped you with that mm-hmm. as one of the most wonderful things, I will oh. never do that as long as I live. Oh, I appreciate that more than you know. You And let me tell you the thing that you said at the time. So you came down here for a program and it was Mother's Day weekend. That's how I remember it. And it was May 20th, 2013. And you had said this, that on your birthday, you noticed that you and your husband would always have an argument. And you said that you realized that before, because on that day you figured it's my birthday, I should get my way. Well, all throughout the year, you didn't get your way. You basically acquiesced to whatever it was your husband wanted. And you said this, you did it to facilitate a false sense of peace. And you realized on your birthday that that was the problem. And girl, you let me tell you, you spoke to my whole existence at that time. And, mm, mm. and you think you're doing the right thing. And you and, and you really hurt. Even your husband doesn't like you when you do that. You know what I mean? They, but you they, don't know. You don't know. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. you don't know. And I was thought I was... And I was like, oh, he wanted that strong woman he married that has an opinion and wants stuff. He doesn't want that woman who yeah. just, you know, kills every argument by acquiescing all the time. Yeah. He didn't want it. Who knew? Who, who knew? He didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. know. And I didn't know it until that day. That's why I remember the day because, yeah, it, it went pretty cray cray here for a couple of years after that. So thank you. But we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're it's, good. It's, 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 yeah, it's a rock. It's, it, 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 it's a fight getting out of that. You yeah, know, yeah, the struggle is real. It, 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 very much so. Everybody made it out alive. So yeah, we're okay. right, right. <laughs> hey, look, you guys, this conversation could go on forever, and it probably will after this. I just want y'all to know. But don't forget, while you're here, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave us a comment. And don't worry, you'll have all of Judge Lynn's information in the description section, so you can you can reach out and find her on social media. But Lynn. Before I let you go, my friend, all right, I gotta play my game. <laughs> so the game is called This or That. Okay. I'm gonna give you the choice of two things, and okay. you, my friend, off the top of your head, you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you right. ready to play? Okay. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Flowers or plants? Plants. Hotel or tent? Ooh, tent. Really? Yeah, I love camping. Are you, I did not know that. I love camping. Oh my, I just think it's the, the food tastes better when you, oh, love no, it. Ma'am. My idea of roughing it is no room service. Okay, now you know. <laughs> Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. Ah, practical joker or don't play like that? I would love to be a practical joker. I'm just not good at it. (laughs) 
I can't keep secrets and I can't, you know what I mean? And, and um, I have a very re readable face. So I can't surprise nobody. I can't oh get away with nothing. My husband once told me, never be a criminal and you'll get caught. Yeah, well, there's that too. <laughs> You're just too honest. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Go with that. <laughs> Candlelight Moon. or moonlight? Moonlight, because that means you're outside. Okay, and we're back to the camping thing. Mm. There you go. I don't know. Planner <laughs> or make it up as you go? Planner. Oh, okay. Wow. Go all day or I need a nap? I need a nap. Right? Ooh. I go all day, but I need but a I nap. But I need a nap. <laughs> no, that's right. In your speaking, is it pecan or pecan? Pecan, that's what I say. Really? I know. This is just going to be interesting as this go. Okay. That, that is so funny. Their eyes or their smile? What's the first thing you notice about somebody? Smile. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Are you a words of affirmation person or a person who enjoys the service? The service. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Mad at you. Okay. And here's your last question. You being who you are now, what would you tell your younger self? Quit worrying about it, girl. It's going to be fine. All that stuff you worried about, you wasted your time. Everything turned out okay. Let it go. Oh, my gosh. Wouldn't we all probably tell ourselves that at some point? <laughs> at some Quit point. worrying about it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Lynn, thank you so much for being Thanks here. For having me, Ricky. It's wonderful. I know. It's so fun. And I appreciate all of you all watching. And don't worry. We'll see you next time on Extra.